W's and L's, the weekly recap show where we give a dub to the things that we do like and L's to the things that we don't. I'll let you go first this time. Cool, because I got a list. <laughs> Start up with the positive. Okay. Sure, let's go positive. I'm giving a dub out to the college football committee. Mm. Now, I told myself that I wasn't going to be petty about Sparty getting absolutely date raped on television. But then I just couldn't do it. <laughs> so I found a very elegant way of, you know, talking about this. I think I'm just going to give a dub to the college football committee for calling what they what they probably knew was going to happen with Michigan State, right? For calling it before it actually happened. They saw Michigan State fall to Purdue. And they said, (laughs) bullshit. (laughs) Bullshit. And they ranked them accordingly. Hey, listen, man. When you beat Michigan in that top 10 matchup on on that Saturday, that faithful Saturday, that Halloween Saturday, and you know what? For all, all... the 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 belly aching about the refs or what have you aside the JJ fumbles aside they won right and you were ranked accordingly you were in the playoffs you were in only thing you had to do take care of business against lesser teams and then you're in beat Ohio State you're in you not only didn't take care of business versus lesser teams to stay in the playoff you got absolutely murked versus Boy, Ohio State. It wasn't even close, fam. Didn't look like you belonged on the same field with them. It's one thing to go out there and lose like Penn State did, like a man. You went out there and just and said, please, sir, give us some more. Rain down on me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, yeah, I'm giving the committee some 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 some, some credit. I mean, they looked at undefeated Oklahoma and said, nah, there's a loss in there somewhere. And even though y'all create, even though y'all criticized them, what happened? What happened? Look me in my face and tell me Oklahoma is one of the four or five best teams in the country right now. They said Michigan State is not a better team than Michigan, even though they played head to head and Michigan State came out with the win. Tell me Michigan State's better than Michigan right now. Say it. Say it. I don't believe you. So for all of the wackiness that was the week-to-week rankings from week 8 to week 12, it seems to have shaken out pretty much how they – even Oregon, right? They gave Oregon just enough room to hang themselves. They didn't put them in the top two where I've I've seen certain college football polls ranking them from week to week. They didn't get overexcited about them, and they didn't get underexcited about them. They ranked them exactly where they needed to be. They gave them just enough rope to hang themselves, and now I expect them to be probably out of the top seven or eight. Oregon's done done. They gone gone. Yep. So if there's one piece of solace that Oklahoma can have, after surviving uh, in, in, a, in a late scare versus Iowa State, is that they'll probably be ranked uh, ahead of Oregon. Something, right? I got wind of an interesting story via the Black News Channel this week about the two men that were convicted of murdering Malcolm X back in 1965. Those two men are Muhammad Aziz and Khalil Islam. And they are both being exonerated for that for that murder. Um, it, it's something that kind of went over a little bit quiet. So I thought it was worth mentioning here on the pod. Not I'm not going to pretend to be a historian on the facts of that case or that murder um, of, of Brother Malcolm. But it is something that is very noteworthy uh, and, and should be talked about a little bit more. You know, I, it's it's not a case that often gets dug into a whole lot. You know, uh, we're much more enamored with the the deaths of of slain rappers. You know, R.I.P. to the greats, mm-hmm. R.I.P. and Biggie. But it, this one isn't isn't a killing that gets revisited very often. So I, I definitely wanted to to give it its due and and shout out to those men on in their their legacies. You know, not so much on their lives, obviously, because now we're we're talking sixty years later. But you know, on the legacy, their memories. Yeah, you know? that's crazy for sure. That's crazy to think about. 
last dub I got is going out to um, Delroy Lindo for getting cast in the the new Blade project over there at Marvel. Not not extremely happy or excited for reasons that will be discussed here in the L section. Um, with a lot of things going on over there with Disney, but I will always applaud a black man getting a job, especially in Hollywood. So, especially a great actor like Delroy Lindo. Shout out to Delroy Lindo. I did see a lot of a lot of people theorizing that he's just going to be Whistler, which is seems to be a pretty seamless fit for Blade. Until you dig a little bit into the Blade comics, which I am not. I, I don't read a lot of Blade in the comics. My my first introduction to Blade was Wesley Snipes in the in the nineties films and the early two thousand films. So I'm not I'm not big on them. But they're saying that the, a lot of the chatter that I'm seeing is that Whistler is loosely based on a black character named Jamal that they're thinking could be a little bit more of a of a fit. Ah. If that is the if that is the lore, is that if that is the source material, I'm a source material guy. And even though what I saw in the original Blade films with Wesley Snipes was that of Whistler being Blade's mentor, I'm I am always down with uh introducing original black characters into into to Marvel IPs as opposed to the replacement thing, right? Oh well this time Whistler's gonna be a black guy. You know what I mean? I'm I'm definitely more into that. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. And, uh, you know, always a fan of anything, you know, Delroy Lindo was in for sure. Going back to Romeo Must Die. That's that's that. Oh, and Jet Li film with Aaliyah. Yeah. Right. Like it's little little known, little talked about. But I'm I'm a I'm a big Delroy Lindo fan for sure. Let's get to it, man. Let's get into the into the filth. Well, let's let's get uh let's get the head guy out of the way first. So D23 is coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Big Marvel, Disney, just Disney event, really. Disney's biggest event. It is literally called D23. It's the, it is the Comic-Con of Disney. Yeah. Big reveals, big names come out the woodwork and come and talk. And, you know, they drum up the hoopla. They, they get people excited for the slate that's coming in the following year. Except, uh, oh, Chapek has a scheduling conflict. Turns out... Oh, darn, I'm going to be in L.A. that weekend, and there's no way that I can do both, so I'm just not going to speak or appear at, at D23 at all. He has to be in L.A. for what? Uh, fam, who knows? To jerk off. Who fucking cares? <laughs> it, it's D23. You're the CEO. There's absolutely zero chance that you have a scheduling conflict that takes you away from this outside of some family member untimely falling ill or something like that. There's no way. Zero shot. What's likely is that you've gotten so much bad press in this year, more bad press than Disney has gotten in a generation. You've seemed to have accumulated it in a in a 12 month span and you don't want to run the risk of getting booed in front of your fans. It's always very telling to me what CEOs or, or what executives will what they'll bow out of in terms of bad press because they like to sell you this idea that they're just humming and that everything's fine and that, you know, things are as good as ever. And so when they're forced to meet real people, to stand in front of real people with real thinking brains that aren't, you know, t troll farms on fucking Twitter to push your narrative, all of a sudden it's a backpedal. Well, if you're that unconfident about your position with your consumers, it was standing to believe that maybe something needs to be changed. But it, it, we, we live in an age where you can totally run away from the reality of that and just create this echo chamber by which you, you, you can charge people to enter. So I'm going to create this safe space for myself where I'm, going, I'm not going to acknowledge any outward criticism, right? And I'm going to go as so far to, to throw this very public event that I'm just not going to be involved in for fear of getting the backlash that I have, I have willingly accumulated. There is a warrant for all the outrage and all, all of the, the angst around my position here, right? No one else has drummed this up but you. This is not tabloid stories. This is not someone from another company planting things about you. It's all been driven by you and your decisions as Marvel's head guy. 
since Bob Iger left. And so to look in the face of that and then run away from it, it just seems like that's going to be his plan for everything. Make terrible decisions that garner horrible publicity and just act as if it's not happening. Run away from them. Okay. Sure. Let's see. Let's see. It's not going to work forever. It would be a very peculiar thing for the Sony movie. Hear me out now, y'all, because this is a very real possibility. For the Sony movie to be the best thing in phase four. You know that company that Marvel perpetually shits on and treats like a little brother who can't tie his own fucking shoes? Those guys could potentially make a better movie than anything that Marvel is putting out. Because I'm telling you, if Spider-Man is half of what we think it is, it's already going to be better than anything Marvel has put out in Phase 4. And it's it's not a hard bar to cross either, guys. That's, that's what's so surprising. Eternals, Black Widow, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi will be its, its highest competition, and they don't need to do a whole lot to beat it. They only need to do one thing, really. Which is show the shit. Well, just, just do the, do the thing, and you're already going to be at least a step ahead of Shang Chi. As long do as you thing. don't totally, as so as, as long as as long as they don't totally shit the bed on the script, it's already going to have a, a a head start on Shang Chi. You don't think if they do the thing that everybody's expecting them to do, that that wouldn't just automatically no. So that that's what puts them in the starter block next to the best movie that that's come out in Phase Four which already, is- which is Shang Chi. So the fact that you're going to do the thing gets you right there. Okay. Starts you out where you need to be. Okay. But if they shit the bed on the script, that that's going to be. If it, if it's a good which is, movie on top of doing the thing, then it it will be better than anything that Marvel has put out so far in Phase Four. I I'd, I'd agree. Again, they've got blockbuster films on the horizon. Thor, Love, and Thunder. Uh, you Strange. got Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Ant-Man and, Ant-Man and the Wasp. And then the, the obvious one in BP2. So they have things on the horizon. I don't have the, the utmost confidence in a lot of those films outside of maybe Multiverse of Madness. Because yeah, that, that just because of the sheer build that would have led to that, that movie. It takes a huge jump with Doctor Strange, I would think. Wanda, Loki, you know, presumably Spider-Man, all that's going to play a role in uh, in what's going on in Multiverse of Madness. So I, 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 I anticipate that one being more of a, a superhuman team-up along the lines of a Civil War as opposed to being a solo film, mm-hmm. it's seeming like now. Yep. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it, it's... It's going to be a thing. It's going to be a whole thing. So we'll see. Um, Now, the actual shits. Nate Moore, you out your damn mind. You are out your god. You're out your mind, fam. What are the chances we see the character of T'Challa in the MCU moving forward? And what is it like having to balance uh, loyalty to a fan base and to a performer as regal and elegant as Chadwick Boseman, yeah. along with the future of that franchise, that character, and of Wakanda? Yeah. Uh, it's a great question. I will say the chances that you see T'Challa in our... I'm not, I'm not hedging my bets. I'm being quite honest. Uh-huh. T'Challa is... You will not see T'Challa in the MCU 616 universe. We could we couldn't do it. I mean, I will say when to, when Chad passed, it was a real conversation we had with Kugler about what do we do, and it was a fast conversation. It wasn't weeks; it was minutes of we have to figure out how to move this franchise on without that character because I think we all feel so much of T'Challa in the MCU on the screen, not in comics, right? Um, is tied to Chadwick's performance. Is is what he brought to that role both on and off screen, I would argue. So as hard as it is narratively to figure out what to do, because it's a big, it's a big hole, um, uh, at no point did we consider recasting him. Mm. So, so, the, so the challenge for Black Panther Wakanda forever is telling a story without T'Challa. And I think it's a challenge we're up 
for and obviously we're in the middle of it and and we're figuring it out and it's it's so far i think what we're getting is is great but the challenge of the movie i think is to entertain people but there will be a level of i think catharsis and people coming back to this universe without that guy because that guy and that universe to me are one in the same so as filmmakers and storytellers you have to figure out how people are going to feel going into your movie and what you want that movie to say about that guy who's not going to be in your movie. Mm. Wow. I'm sitting over here trying to figure out all this time how the hell the decision to not recast the first real leading superhero in Marvel, being that of, of T'Challa, Black Panther, got scratched out without so much of having a, 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 a real thought out conversation. It took minutes. Took minutes. What you trying to do just now in your in your interview on Van Lathan's podcast is you try to pull on my emotional heartstrings in real time and tell me that you didn't really even consider recasting T'Challa because you thought that that was going to give you cover in your decision. You thought that you saying no, we snapped and we thought Chadwick's T'Challa. Period. Full stop. And that's the way we're going about it. Was going to give you the emotional cover. From from this wrath. Cathartic. It's going to be cathartic. To kill a fictional character. To memorialize Chadwick Boseman. That's cathartic. So it soothes your soul. To kill a fucking cartoon. To fit. To, to, to fit real life tragedy. Is that what you do? Every time somebody die. You go out and kill a comic book character. Is that how you get off? Is that how you grieve? What, what are you even. What are we even talking about anymore man? What are we doing? Have we really gotten to a spot where we just all going to line up and eat our fucking misery porn from, from, from Marvel so that we can get a black IP? That's, that's what we going to do. No, I'm not, I'm not accepting that, man. I'm not accepting that. I'm not buying it. I'm not sitting down to watch it. I've, I've been very careful about trying to stay out of boycotting language. And, and you know what? It's at a point where now I would just say that me personally, again, I am not going to see that film and I'm not going to encourage anyone that I deal with or that I conversate with about this movie to go see it. I will not. I refuse. I refuse to get slapped in my face and sit down in a, in a movie theater and watch a movie. I refuse. Y'all didn't even y'all didn't even talk to the family. Y'all don't care. Y'all don't give a fuck about his widow. Y'all don't care about his, his surviving relatives, parents, siblings. You don't care. Y'all didn't care. Nate Moore, don't, don't think I forgot about the fact that you told Ryan Coogler back in 2018 not to ever fall in love with the character of T'Challa in the first place. Now you're telling me y'all had a five-minute, five-second, it sound like, conversation about how to move on without this character on the heels, off of the heels of, Ryan, uh, of, of Chadwick Boseman's death. So, we have you in 2018 telling Ryan Coogler not to get comfortable with the character of T'Challa. So, right then and there, I already know where your mental space is at. I already know where you stand. So, Chadwick Boseman tragically dies in 2020. And so, here you come, slithering your ass into it. Five-second conversation. Oh, we're not, we're moving forward from him. So, it seems as though, Nate Moore, you just told me that you leveraged the emotional situation of Chadwick Boseman dying as a way of removing the character, something that you had thoughts of doing back before the first movie ever came out. Didn't consider the family, didn't ask the widow, didn't consider the fandom, didn't consider the 60 years worth of readers that, that supported and yearned for this character that ultimately culminated in you bringing it to the live screen. No consideration for them whatsoever, just your own personal grief, your personal position at Marvel, whatever it is that led you to be so openly hostile to this black male character, whatever the hell it is, that is the only thing that has, that has been considered. And that's, that's, not, that's no longer me being presumptuous. That's no longer me assuming. That is your own goddamn words out of your own mouth. You didn't consider Anything that should be considered with this character whatsoever, but your own personal preference. And that is the only thing that I can take out of that interview. It is wrong to sit up here and say that the only black male leading character in a, Mar in a Marvel franchise. I know that sounds like a bunch of caveats, but fucking Uncle Tom Sam is not it. 
by the way, your boy, it, that wasn't the only thing that was said in, 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 in this, this interview that kind of blew me the fuck away. Talking about Sam, Captain America. I swear to God, I thought we just had a whole show about Cap, about Sam Wilson earning the shield of Captain America. Now he needs to earn it some more. God damn, this black man show do got to do a whole lot to earn the stars and fucking stripes on his chest. But that's not at all problematic to Nate Moore and Marvel. It's not at all. This language that they're putting out there about black male characters, the, the attitude that they seem to have towards them is very derogatory and it seems hostile. It's mind boggling that I'm seeming to get it out of out of a black man, another black man. That's mind boggling. But I, I don't dog. Yeah, no, I'm glad you you said that because I'm sitting here just thinking like you are like essentially the head black person in charge. So to to make these comments and not realize how tone deaf it's coming off as is, hell is ridiculous. As I, I hell. can't fathom being a black man and not realizing that what you're doing is it's ridiculous El eliminating not just the 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 titlier character but you're eliminating a role for a black man at marvel don't don't tell me that nate moore doesn't know that i don't want to hear that don't tell me he's so grief stricken over a person that he's not even truly grieving I, i'm not i am not playing the shenanigans you don't get the shit and call it rain okay i don't i'm not doing that this is not grief. This is obviously a business decision that was made very shrewdly for reasons that I will admit that I don't fully, I can't fully articulate because again, I'm not Nate Moore, right? I'm not in his brain. But the one thing that I know for a fact, because I have grieved enough people in my time, in my very short time on this earth to know what it, what it looks like in any shape or form, reenacting a death for millions of dollars is not grief that's bullshit and i don't care if you're angela bassett or lapita nuango or nate moore or ryan cooler or winston or, or winston duke or whoever is involved with this production monetizing chadwick boseman's death is not grief getting a million dollar payday off of chadwick boseman dying is not grief it's not it's morbid as fuck is what it is. It's evil. That shit is sick. It's just, it, I, I, y'all, y'all really about to march a Chadwick die banner out here for Black Panther 2. Get people in the seat so that they can cry their eyes out and experience real actual stress and anxiety over watching this reenactment, right? And that's going to be the winning ticket for y'all to win. You don't want to really tell a true original black story. You don't want to tell original black stories. You don't want original black characters to thrive the same way a Superman has, the same way a Batman has. Hell, the same way fucking Captain America has in your own universe. You do not want that. That is not what you're working towards, and I'm not going to pretend that it is. It's not in your purview. So since that has clearly been defined, I would like to proclaim at least from my perspective i can't talk from my partner here but from my perspective i am going to begin to branch out and explore other ips i can't guarantee what what the next marvel project is that we'll cover because i'm not going to have someone be openly hostile to 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 people that represent me or ips or stories or characters that represent me and continue to support that ip that is madness to me. And that's not to talk to anybody else and what they do on their platforms in regards to recast T'Challa or anything that has to do with this movement. Everybody has to move the way that they feel best in regards to their platforms. For me, it is completely asinine to continue to support a platform that is openly hostile towards me and people that look like me. I'm not going to do that. Maybe, you know, when Spider-Man rolls around, maybe we'll do a review. Maybe not. Maybe when we get some new news on Blade, maybe we'll talk about it. Or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll talk about DC and the Black Lantern uh, 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 series that they have coming out with Jon Stewart, centering Jon Stewart. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll we'll begin to explore some other IPs with uh, Cowboy, Cowboy Bebop 
on on Netflix and an anime adaptation that's coming out in live action on Netflix. Maybe we'll start to explore some other IPs that aren't so hostile to black men. That 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 are a safe place to see black men represented. If we can't get on the same page about what we want and you're just going to force feed me bullshit through propaganda. No, I'm good. I'm I, I'm not interested in seeing Black Panther turn into Tyler Perry. Save your Jon Snow baby. Save your your discount name more. Save all of that shit. I'm cool. Or let the MCU fans have it. And let's see if it makes a Billy. You think you can make comic book movies without sticking to the comic books? Go do it then. Go do it. Because Black Widow, Eternals, that's not it. That's not the model. That's not the model. I don't care what your uh, supporters say about you online, about what's what Marvel's been putting out, you know, post-pandemic. But this is not the model. It's not. And you know who you can't lie to in that regard? Your shareholders. We can move on. Boy, wearing a Captain America shirt was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wanted to say one last thing. Is Go it doesn't quite make sense to me uh, after seeing the droves of black people who came to see the first Black Panther. Three, that, four, five, six times. You think I'm going to sign up to do that? To watch this black man die again? To just, it, it doesn't even, even if you're going off business sense and you're, and you're going off what makes money, it doesn't make good business sense to just say, ah, fuck that. Fuck that. Get that out of here. I just find that weird, but the comments, he, he never, more so. Nate Moore never wanted the character to, to blossom the way that it was starting to organically. Yeah. I can't even say that the, the way the character was written in the first movie, that it was meant to be a character who carried so much weight in the MCU, mm. but it happened organically. Yeah. And Nate Moore said to Ryan Coogler himself do not fall in love with this character. He should have known right then and there that he never anticipated for a black man to be leading the MCU ever. At least at least not in the way that it would have been through T'Challa, a black man leading a, a, a black nation leading the MCU. No, it'll be a black man in stars and stripes leading the MCU, right? Because we all know why that's a little bit more palatable to the MCU crowd. A black man got to earn, earn them stripes. You got to earn them stars and stripes, boy. Got to earn them stars and stripes. Dance, Sam. Dance. All right. Coming off of that, I think I got to lighten up the mood a little bit. I'm going to start off with my doves. Uh, being that Thanksgiving is obviously on Thursday, so it's, it's coming up. Mm -hmm. I guess by the time we release this, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, I got to give a dub to Jamal Hinton, uh, which is a story you probably know about by now, is the guy who uh, was invited to Thanksgiving by the white lady, uh, the grandma. Oh, yeah. And so uh, that story is coming up once again. Apparently, they're going to do it for, it seems to be the sixth year. Um, and so just happy to see that that tradition is continuing. It's a Thanksgiving tradition. That Shout out to Jamal. Um, R.P. Lonnie as well. Uh, he's the, the husband of the lady. Oh, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. R.P. Lonnie. Who, who passed the mm -hmm. COVID. Um, but yeah, no, love to see that. Uh, it's always a wholesome thing to see on Thanksgiving. So I always wanted to shout that out. Uh, on to my L's. Uh, this is one of the, the poll choices that I, you know, I just felt like I had to talk about. Kanye and Drake ending their beef. Ew, ew, ew. I wanted to stay off of this. We don't believe you. You need more people. Because, bro, no, nobody believes. I'm not interested in the rap propaganda driven by Jay Prince. I didn't believe it when it was coming out of Drake's camp from Jay Prince. I don't believe it now that Jay Prince standing in the background. I don't care, nor do I believe you. You can't Let's sell me on. all these pictures together. You can't sell me on the videos they made together. I don't care if I see Kanye smiling with his arm around Drake. All the awful shit it. that y'all have said about each other and to each other, you expect me to believe that all of that shit was squashed out with a conversation. I don't believe you because there is nothing that you could say to me as a man after you went on for the last two or three years trying to tell anyone who would listen that you've had sex with my wife. That that a, a handshake and a conversation fixed all that. That's not how that works. Either that or both of these niggas are, are beyond fake. Faker than fake. Like fake Gucci bag at the concert fake. Yeah. Which is also possible. Like Nike swoosh in the wrong place fake. No fibers on the $20 bill fake. But the good thing is that 
Drake hasn't settled his beef with Pusha T. Pusha T's probably dropping an album sometime this year, so hopefully we get that diss from Pusha T. Yeah, that them is that's two niggas that you will never see in a room with Jay Prince. <laughs> Ever. 1, for no reason people. at all. Never. And I'm happy for that. Yeah. At least somebody telling the truth. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Speaking of his uh, homeboy's ex-wife, I got to give an L to this whole Pete Davidson and Kim K thing, too, just because that's yet another thing I don't give a fuck about, and yet I keep seeing headlines about. I would think that at some point she would stop fucking around with celebrities. You, There's no person with any relevant following that you can date without the entire world knowing. Right, like at some point, I would think she would start trying, like just, you know, you know, be like, be like Janet or Cassie, and and find your trainer or some shit like that. Find somebody who drives a Kia. Pete Davidson probably drives a Kia. Uh, Pete Davidson doesn't have a car. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> so you know, just you know, go to Pilates and meet a dude. And for Kim Kardashian, that can't be that hard. To you do. know, just find a normal guy. Chris not not that Pete Davis guy. is not normal or Kanye or any of them aren't normal. I'm just saying, like, non, like, headline. But I can't I – just, I just cannot imagine her and Pete Davidson having a long life together and having more children yeah. and shit like that. It just doesn't no. doesn't seem like even where that's heading. Not that that's what it has to be either. I just feel like if – Celebrities do not enjoy the paparazzi and people being in their business the way that they say they do. You would think that some of these people would start dating normally. You know, like, just find a guy. Just find a person that you like. It doesn't have to be another celebrity. It doesn't have to be another ball player or another actor or another, you know. It, it, you meet those people in certain situations for reasons. Only, there's only so many celebrities you can meet organically. You know what I'm saying? Well, for one, they're the Kardashians, so they whatever they do has to perpetuate headlines. I don't think you've seen any of them without a celebrity at any point. One Except time. for Courtney and, and Scott Disick, which he became a celebrity because of them. Well, he was rich, though, before that, though. Oh, well. Um, but you have seen that happen one time. Kim did have a relationship with a regular person, and it didn't work out, unfortunately. She even married that person. His name is Chris Humphreys. <laughs> He's not a regular person. Chris <laughs> he is, Humphreys. He is an amazingly regular person. Chris Humphreys was an even NBA on the basketball court. player. Even he, on the basketball even, court, he was a regular person. Chris Humphreys played in the NBA. I am better than Chris Humphreys. For many a years. <laughs> like, that's not, like, I want her to go to Whole Foods, talk to the butcher, and ask him if he wants to get a drink after that's work. That's how she met Chris Humphreys. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I want her to be walking her dog at the fancy you know, rich people dog park and start a random conversation with the man in the dog park and then to go get Starbucks and bagels, you know, something that happens every day. I want her to peruse through Twitter and find somebody Well, not through Twitter because that that's a fuck app. Right. So, uh, you I know, love Twitter, I love Twitter. It, it's, it's a fuck app, but I love Twitter. Sometimes Do you gotta, something normal. Sometimes you got to engage with that part of your, uh, your psyche. And that's what Twitter is for me. I said Twitter's a fuck up. I meant, um, what's the Tinder? I didn't mean Twitter. I oh, meant Tinder's Tinder. a huge, yeah, huge fuck up. I meant Tinder. Oh, you okay? I see what you yeah. mean. I, when you said fuck up, I thought you meant like a like a fuck boy like type of deal. No, no, I meant no, literal like Tinder is literally <laughs> literal fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's where Nick Cannon met most of his baby mom. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> uh, the last L, this this is a hoot. You remember earlier this year, a woman gorilla glued her hair to her scalp. I do. You're going to hate this. Uh, she is embarking on a new endeavor in life. She is making music. She's releasing a single called My Hair. She's deciding to be a rapper after all this. Now, all of y'all have to suffer through this with me because y'all gave her all that money. That's what she did with the GoFundMe, GoFundMe money. She started her, her, her recording career, her record, her fucking artist career. She's a singer now, y'all. And now all of y'all who gave money to this woman because she put fucking Gorilla Glue in her hair. Now you have to suffer through this with us together. 
why is that always the thing to do? Sh- uh, people should stop gatekeeping grief and start gatekeeping hip hop because that <laughs> always seems to be the thing where, oh, I got a little tiny bit of fame. I'm gonna fucking rap. Niggas definitely gatekeep on the wrong things. Y'all will let anybody roll up in here every four years and tell us who to vote for, but 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 when it comes to a, a a movie role or or you know rapping or anything like that, man, y'all just be like, when it, when it comes to this whole not black enough, hair is not coarse enough. A little bit of clout. It's either a I'm gonna come out with a single, or b I'm gonna box somebody. I'm going to fight somebody in the ring, and I'm getting tired of it. I hate it. I would not like to see it. Hey, you know what? If you're willing to put yourself out there to be embarrassed or knocked out, potentially, do get get your money. Get your money. I, I believe in you get to use your body however you see fit. Don't expect me to respect you for it. Don't expect me to value that you value your body so little that you're willing to you know, literally put it on the line for a dollar. Don't expect me to respect you for that. But hey, you have the right to make money off that body however you see fit. I 1000% believe that a better choice to make money off of, fuck a single, you could have made some kind of hair product. No, no, she doesn't want to enterprise, Josh. She wants to be famous. She wants to continue her fame. This is not how you do it because nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. I guess I care because I made it a thing. Did you get $100,000 off of GoFundMe? No. 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 So then you can't tell her. She can pay for her own studio time. $100,000 is seed money for a hair product that you could have made. I don't even know if she got a hundred. Whatever she got off that fucking GoFundMe. It It, was too much. It still would have been seed money to make a million dollar business. This is a woman who put Gorilla Glue in her hair. It's flip. not it's not somebody who you're expecting to flip a profit. Fair enough. Fair enough. Give us your dubs and nails for the week in the comments below. Could be something personal, could be something about any of the news stories we cover. You just let us know. We're looking to engage. Thanks. And check out last week's W's and L's episode to the left there. And then also we got a whole playlist full of W's and L's. So check it out.